All right, thanks to PCBWay for supplying boards for the channel. We get to have lots of nice projects. Um, this board turned out good. Um, we gotta check out, check out Impside Dog. All right, so we need to load this up. Um, I decided to use these um, surface mount switches here, which I have kind of a love-hate relationship with. Uh, talk about that. Uh, let's see here. So here's a here's a board loaded, oops, with a screw on it. Interesting. Um, so uh, these are those switches. Does this go? Yeah, that's as far as it goes. Um, and they're nice in that you can put them on the board and then and then reflow the board in the oven, and everything is great. You don't have to do anything any additional operations like you would on a through hole switch, um, but. I don't like the feel of the switches. Um, they are kind of hard to press. So that's my love-hate thing with them. Um, I did make one error. You can see there's a bodge wire on here. Um, and we need to talk about that because it's an interesting, an interesting mistake that a lot of people could make. Um, here's the regulator. And I have a pad here for when you reflow the uh, and you put a lot of solder here, it acts as a heat sink. So the little tab doesn't do you much good unless you have some copper area to dissipate the heat. So that's what that's all about. Uh, anything else here? I put a socket on it so I could work on the board uh, without the display on it because the display would get get into the get into the way of working on the board. Um, but yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, let's try it out. All right, I've got 12 volts here, uh, the in, the in and ground, and uh, there we go. We have a we have a splash screen. I'll have to let, let you see a splash screen. There you go, inside guy. Um, so we have gain of one, uh, gain of a thousand, gain. So that one's going down. This one goes up, so gain 100,000, 1, 10, 100. and then this one goes in the reverse direction, and that's what doesn't do anything right now. I'll figure out what I want to do with that later. All right, so um, we can see right away it's doing something. So a gain of 1, it's just sitting, the ADD is just sitting at 1.4 volts, it's just sitting there. And um, now it's starting to bump a little bit. And now it's bumping more, and then at a gain of 1,000, it's really bumping now. And that's because the uh, photodiode is looking at the room lights, which are flickering at 120 hertz, right? So it is, it is functional. Uh, let's go ahead and demo that on the, uh, on the oscilloscope. Um, on... If you, if you get one of these boards off, I'll have it on my share site on PCBWay. If you get one of these boards on PCBWay, I did a revision to the board where I fixed the bodge wire problem. Um, and I also added a, a, a connector over here so you can look at, the, I bring the analog voltage out. So if you're gonna use this thing and you wanna hook your scope up like I'm about to, there'll be, there'll be a little test point out here. Um, and uh, you'll be able to clip onto that and it'll make it make your life much easier. I think what I'll do right now is I'll solder a little wire and make my own little test, my own little test um, point and we'll take a look at it on the scope. All right, I put a little piece of wire here so I can clip my scope probe onto it. I have the gate set to that gain of, uh, that gain of a thousand. And uh, over here on the scope, uh, you can see that we're seeing the the flickering of the lights, right? Uh, we can. Oh, I just got my I got my arm I got my arm over it, so you can see that it's actually working. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and um, trigger on that. We'll go here to trigger. Uh, we will trigger on the edge. Let's see here. Where is AC AC coupling for the trigger? Trigger, trigger, auto rising, conditioning, coupling, here we go, coupling AAC, there we go, coupling AC, and then we should be able, oh, we should be able to do a 50%, uh, it didn't work, 
it didn't work. So let me grab the trigger here. Where's my, where's my trigger? Oh, it's not working, huh? Oh, there we go. All right. Um, so we are there. Let's turn on a, a counter. Um, let's see here. I didn't set that back up. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. Measure time frequency add frequency on one. There we go. And we're currently measuring uh, 120. Oops, 120. Although it's uh, hard for it to uh, hard for it to measure. There we go. Wow, it's really bumping around. Let me put on some filtering. Um, let's change the bandwidth to say 40 megahertz. Eh, 20 megahertz. 10 megahertz. Apply. We still quite a, have quite a bit of noise. Probably need to add some capacitors to that feedback. Um, yeah, around 120 hertz. Anyway, you get the idea. This is stupid. <laughs> you get the idea. Um, turn this off. And let's see. Let's go back to here. And we're running right at, right at about 10 volts. If I go down to a gain of 100, it dropped it. Gain of 10, it dropped it. And gain of 1. So that's kind of the zero point right there. Let's put zero on the middle trace. And then we can go up. And yeah, you can see it pop up there. Anyway, the gain does, the gain does do a gain thing. Okay, so let's talk about some error in the PC board. Um, and let me just let me just disconnect this and clear off my bench. So I, I talked about this switch system where you have a 10k pull up. And then if you press this switch, it grounds it. So you have five volts here. And then if you press the switch, you'll get zero volts. And then I have another 10K resistor on this one. So if you press this switch, it'll divide it by two. You'll get uh, half of VCC. And here I have a 4.7. So you'll get one third of VCC. So it, that's a way of having three switches, but just uh, dedicating just one line on your microprocessor and then using the ADD. And that's the kick. Uh, using the ADD. So I had it coming in here to pin 7, okay? Because it laid out well that way, right? Uh, and then you look here at pin 7. Uh, get, one of your, get one of these sheets. If you ever do any work with, uh, with these things, get one of these sheets and then you'll know. You, you can find them online. Look for uh, AT Tiny uh, pinout. Um, so the different pins can do different things. Like uh, to program the pin you use um, you use pin 10, which is which is the UPDI pin. You can use it for other things as well, but I always just leave it alone and dedicate it for my programming pin. Um, if you're doing uh, uh, serial, you can use the S clock and, and in and out. These things for using I squared C, like on my um, uh, my display. Okay, so my display, I'm dedicating it to line six and seven, which are S, SDA and SCL. All right, so that that's good. Um, so if you're going to do digital things, okay, you can look look here and it says ah, okay, green uh, blue blue is a digital pin. So digital pin digital pin here, um, and it says uh, orange is analog and digital. So orange, you can do analog and digital. So all of the orange pins, you, you can either do a one or a zero, or you can use them as a DAC out or an ADD, ADD in. Um, but unfortunately these two pins, which are dedicated to, uh, uh, serial data four and five are digital only, and they don't have an ADD available to them. So which pin did I use? Pin seven. Whoops. So, uh, yeah, check this before uh, to do the functionality you want. And um, 
Yeah. So um, I need to move it. Yeah, where's my board? Here's my board. Okay. So my little jump goes from pin seven over to pin thirteen. So uh, now now I'm going to use pin pin thirteen instead. And pin thirteen has uh, an orange, and that can do an A to D. So that's what that's what the cut and jump is. Okay. So that's one thing. And then once I had the board, uh, I did change some resistor values uh, from what I had originally planned. Um, but they weren't big. Uh, these probably still need to be adjusted. The output of the uh, op amp can go from zero to VCC, and in this case it's 12 volts, so zero to 12 volts. But the, the A to D on the uh, part can only go to five volts, actually probably four volts. And um, so you need to divide it down before it goes into the A to D. Now, uh, pin 11 is what I'm going to read the voltage on, and fortunately pin 11 was also an orange, so I was okay there. But yeah, this divides it by one third and goes in there. You probably can change this. Um, what I found was that uh, really this thing doesn't work too much with room lights and stuff until you get to one meg, maybe 100k, but one meg. So the values of these should probably be bumped up if you're going to use this thing. It probably should be something like, uh, uh, I don't know, 100k, 1 meg, 10 meg, 100 meg, something like that, right? Uh, in order to have more gain in the system. And then maybe then that capacitor. I don't have any capacitors loaded off on these. And maybe with super high gains, maybe the capacitors will be, will be valuable. Although we did see a lot of noise on my signal at 1 meg. So probably, probably could have a little bit of a, of a, of a, a roll off there with that, with that capacitor. But yeah, there you go. Anyway, I think it's a real fun project. I uh, kind of wanted it as a building block for maybe other things, but I, I don't know. I was just bored one day, and I and I and I said, "Hey, I'll, I think I just want to build a build a fun little circuit and, and do some analog and digital uh, and show off using a, a analog switch for gain settings and things like that." So anyway, there you go, cute little project.